Good. Good evening. I'd like to call to order the Springport Area School District Board meeting. This is Monday, March 25th. Please rise for the pledge. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The Springford Board of School Directors believes the community has the right to bring before the board issues and concerns they may have about items on the agenda or about items in general which affect the district or their children. Because of this belief and philosophy, the board will schedule a time at the beginning and conclusion of every meeting to have an opportunity for community members to share their concerns with the board. At the start of the meeting, members from the public may comment on agenda items only. The school board will move through the meeting agenda, then at the end, when prompted, there will be a time for public comment. This meeting is being filmed to be broadcast on community cable channels and online. Individuals intending to make public comments should be aware that they are being filmed. Speakers will be asked to state their name in the area in which you reside before your comment. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, Mrs. Ms. Crew, not Mrs. Bickert tonight. Welcome to the table. Ms. Crew, can we please have a roll call? Sure. All board members are present in person this evening. Thank you very much. Um, and as far as announcements go, the board did meet in an executive session prior to the board to discuss personnel issues. Um, I also have another announcement that as far as the agenda goes, we are going to be striking from the agenda um, section six, I believe. Let me just double check before I speak. Yes, yeah, section six, letter M. That is not ready to be voted on. And so that will be eliminated from tonight's voting meeting. Okay, Mr. Rizzo, anything from your end? Not at this time, thank you. Okay, great. So I don't see public to be heard on my agenda, but we are going to have public to be heard. So if there is anyone that likes to speak, please approach the podium with your name, township of residence, as well as the agenda item for which you are speaking to. Okay. All right, um, moving forward, we'll jump right into our section one board and committee reports. And Mr. Jackson, welcome back. Have you start off with finance? Well, I'm so happy to hear you guys missed me, but time will tell. Uh, good evening. I'd like to speak to the finance committee meeting that was held on March 12th. Thank you. There were no items to be heard on the on agenda items. Um, items discussed was the executive report through February 29th of 2024. Liquidity is $122 million on hand. Revenues, interest income, EIT and transfer taxes are exceeding the plan. Expenditures, uh, health insurance, happy to say this February lowest month in claims for the year. However, claims costs continue to run higher than expected. Special education is overplanned, primarily due to the court mandated age increase and greater than expected move ins as an impact to the budget. Food service, 520,000 meals served year to date. Participation is strong. Operating income year to date is over $700,000. Uh, Mr. Fink gave an update um, on the, gave a budget update. Uh, the current gap is 7.5 million, but there's more work to be done. Mr. Fink also reviewed other considerations and unknown and open items as a part of his update. Um, board comment, Ms. Deardorff requested confirmation of the budget schedule um, for the public, which I think was presented. And that completes my report for finance. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Questions or comments? Okay, property. Property, March 12th. Uh, we discussed ongoing business. There are two chillers that we're installing, one at Rogers Ford and one at Limerick. Um, both chillers have been installed, but they're not operational. We're looking at those being operational um, around the first week of April, and that falls in line with the projected time frame that we were carrying. There was also discussion regarding infra informational information that we receive, I know two times, that we receive from the boroughs. And this is really coordination with our um, transportation department. 
as far as road work, so we are allowed to make um, smart plans as far as uh, traffic and the pick up and drop off of our kids. Um, on the new business, there is Brook Elementary School playground equipment is on the agenda for approval, along with discussions of a $9,000 acceptance um, for concrete pads from Upper Providence um, Home and School Association. There was an update from the school police and safety update. Um, all monthly fire, fire drills, evacu evacuation drills, and alley drills were complete for school requirements. The school police and administrators con conducted threat assessment meetings the first Monday of every month per Act 25. On the grant, my favorite topic with Chief, the second part of the PCCD grant 38439 is the purchase of 80 digital radios and 154 spare batteries. The radios and, and batteries are a vital part of the overall security and communications plan for the district. The radios and batteries have been ordered and we're awaiting the delivery ETA May of this year. Chief Boyer is awaiting completion of the night locks, the flex. Ninth grade and high school have some adjoining doors to be completed. We have applied for the PCC competitive grant for $450,000. We are awaiting results of that application. We were awarded a meritorious grant of $45,000 for physical security and uh, was awarded back in February. Um, under training, the Spring Ford School District and the Spring Ford Police are hosting the Mission Kids training event. It's a child abuse symposium on March 28th at the Spring Ford High School. Please come out and support. Um, and there are four items, as I mentioned earlier, on the agenda for approval. Uh, playground equipment at Brook, the acceptance of the donation of um, Upper Providence Home and School, two monitors um, as requested by the administration, and the phase three to complete the command center at the high school through co-stars. And that completes my report for property. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Questions or comments? I do have a question with regards to property, but I think I'm going to hold it for right now as not to um, slow down the momentum and uh, bring it up when we get to the voting section of the property um, agenda. So we'll move on. Mrs. Weingarten, uh, Career and Technology Center. Thank you. Our Western Montgomery Career and Technology Center, JOC, met on March 4th. Um, I wanted to give you an update. Um, last I think it was last Friday, March 15th, uh, applications closed for next year. 386 students applied to be part of the Western Tech Center program. I'll give you a little breakdown for Spring Ford. Uh, 73 middle school students, 27, 27 ninth graders, 13 10th graders, 5 11th graders, and two 12th graders, a total of 120 applications for Spring Ford. Now keep in mind, of those 386 total applications from the three schools, there are only 250 spots open. So I'll give you a little bit of a framework for how some of those applications broke down um, in some of the more uh, popular programs. Cosmetology had 69 students apply for 20 seats. Culinary, 39 students for 20 seats. Carpentry, 29 for 11 seats. Intro to medical, 47 applications for 24 seats. Welding, 28 students for 10 seats. So as you can see, it is um, a bit of an issue in terms of having to turn students away. Uh, for example, we could potentially have another welding class if we had budget for another instructor, the same thing with carpentry. So this is a problem we will try to solve. Um, last year, carpentry and welding had great numbers as well and it continues to grow. So I'll try to bring you a chart of the increasing application numbers. So we also had a report um, Mr. Livingood asked Mr. Robinson to walk us through the application process. Now, I won't take you through the whole application process right now, um, but the application is based on the student's attendance, 
discipline, grades, and a letter of recommendation. So there's basically a tallying system that each student's application goes through, and it's a pretty fair system that allows them to be kind of ranked against each other um, to see who qualifies for each of those seats. Um, let's see. Ah, Hunter Engineering held their first training course at the Tech Center. It's a really remarkable partnership because we purchased a running diesel truck for our diesel students to work on, observe, diagnose, um, and Hunter asked us to be a training center for this. So they provide the students with a lot of machinery and tools, and it's a fantastic program. Um, they asked us to be the ADAS training center, and that's a new feature in some cars, like Nissan, Acura, Honda and we would become one of 12 sites in the country, which is pretty impressive. The system would normally cost $150,000 and Hunter will install that for free, uh, which is really remarkable. And speaking of free, we received uh, free LED lights from Pico and the students have been installing those. It's $100 per light and we received 1,000 lights. Um, they replaced 10 lights in about two hours. So it's not only remarkable that it is free, our students are getting fantastic hands-on um, training to be able to do this. Another note, a co-op banquet will be on April 11th and all board members from the three schools and the superintendents are invited to that. So I hope you've all marked your calendar or actually RSVP'd first, don't forget. Um, let's see, Mr. Rizzo uh, attended our Skills Over Stereotypes evening and said there were over 100 students and parents who attended, which is again pretty impressive and I think a lot of the students that attend are generally um, in middle school so it gives them an uh, opportunity to seek out two of the programs and kind of see what goes on early in their education, which is super uh, impressive. Let's see. We've got an issue that we're looking into where they may have a leaky pipe, which could be contributing to the low water pressure, but it may be a bigger problem than just uh, fixing a leaky pipe. I'll get back to you once we have a diagnosis there. and. Ongoing, not having a maintenance budget is becoming a huge issue for the Tech Center. Um, for example, there was a grant that was just announced and it's a half a million dollar grant, but we would need $125,000 to match the grant in order to even apply. And we just don't carry, um, there's a lot of legal reasons why we are not able to carry um, a maintenance budget separately because it is funded by all three schools. Um, and Mr. Mr. Davis is, um, are, is looking into that and doing some research with the Commonwealth to make sure. And there's a couple other dates. Our next meeting is April 1st at 7 p.m. at the Western Tech Center, and then April 4th is the NACTI Performance Day. But I do have a couple of, this is a little longer update than I usually do, but I do have a couple of, uh, student awards reports that I wanted to celebrate with you um, in terms of our Skills USA competition, which was held in early February. And I think some of you were judges for that. And so I thank you for that. Um, so Gianna Osborne is a senior, early childhood education, and she won silver. Christian Hansel in precision mach machining, also won a silver. Alana Carroll prepared, I'm sorry, she's in the prepared speech and she competed in carpentry, won a silver award. Make sure I'm not missing anyone. Oh, and Jake Rogers won an award, but it's not listing which award it was. Uh -huh. <laughs> so congratulations to those students. I also have um, a culinary arts award. Brianna Wright uh, won a CCAP award and she placed in the top 10, which is incredibly impressive. And then we have our students of the quarter. Uh, carpentry, Lucas Miller. Co-op co education, Gianna Osborne. Cosmetology, Addison Hawks. Cosmetology, Alyssa Quintrell. 
Culinary Arts, Benjamin Lark. Culinary Arts, Brianna Wright. Diesel Technology, Hayden Franks. Uh, HVAC, Austin Thomas. Protective Services, Abigail Wentz. And Protective Services, Ethan Murphy. And that concludes my Western Tech Center report. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, yes, I do, Ms. Weingard. Okay. Did I hear you say there is no budget? Uh, no one knows how to pre prepare a budget? This, this is no, I didn't say there's no budget. There's no maintenance budget. Okay. No, no, it, it, it's carrying a cap reserve. <laughs> so do we have, because we've talked about this for a couple of years now. This is... Yes. Nothing new. So do we have any timeline since we do invest there? Do we have any timeline when they were able to present this information? So we met earlier in the school year. Uh, when I say we, I mean the superintendents and the business managers slash CFOs with Western Center staff. Uh, they are interested in the potential of being able to, with identified projects, carry some sort of cap reserve um, at this point the articles of agreement do not allow for that so that money has to be returned to the sending schools every year so we would have to update the articles of agreement and then we are we are going to be scheduling a meeting soon with the superintendents and the business managers to uh, to see what that could look like and how we can bring this back to our boards so do we have any idea of the potential of this call it allowance or call it slush or call it cap reserve are we looking at a quarter mil half a mil no, we're not sure. You, you mean the potential, the feasibility of it happening or yes. potential costs? Right. I, or it's a combination of both. I, I would say the JOC supports it. I mean, I, I don't want to speak about it. It seems like they support it. I think it seems like um, it's reasonable, but again, it's identified projects. It's just not like an ongoing, they can carry this balance. I think it has to be projects that are identified with costs, and then we can carry it to do that. There's, there's more to it in terms of... Uh, Mark, you can probably jump in any time, but there's more to it in terms of what we pay based on ADM, uh, five-year average ADM versus uh, market value. Uh, there's different percentages, so that all needs to be factored. If we carry a cap reserve at the ADM rate, but then we pay for capital project, that would be a different contribution from each sending school. So there are some things we have to work through, but it is feasible. I was, you, you said it fine. I mean, ultimately, there are two funding mechanisms. We have our ADM for our students and how they're attending and the three-year running average or the market value. And that, this was a big issue back when they expanded the, the programs 15 years ago. So I think ultimately, if there's going to be the establishment of a capital expense fund of maybe a half a million dollars or something to that, give or take, I'm just throwing a number out, what is your what is going to be your percentage and how are we going to ADM to me doesn't seem like it's the logical way to do it. But then again, we could be hurt on the capital side too. So how, how that is uh, played out would have to be through the articles, which are silent on this issue at this point. So I think the, the, the 27 board members of the, of the sending districts are going to have to vote as to how that process is going to occur. So it's, it could t still take a number of months. Thank you. I have a All question. Right. Okay, thank you. I will revisit this at a different time, but okay, thank you. Mrs. Deardorff. Do the career and technology schools have the ability to have education foundations or no? Oh, absolutely. Does ours? I do not believe Western does. Any other questions? Okay, uh, I'll just say that I appreciate you highlighting the uh, student achievements. I don't know that I've heard that a lot and I think that we should make that a regular practice moving forward so thank you Mrs. Weingarten um, Mrs. Westwood Legislative Committee yes the Legislative Committee met on March 12th at 6 p.m. Uh, we were joined by Representative Napoleon Nelson um, for about half the conversation and a lot of it was um, centered on differing viewpoints regarding the basic education funding proposal that's part of Governor Shapiro's proposed budget budget um, we talked quite a bit about cyber charter reform. Um, Representative Nelson shared his thoughts on the need to look at what education should look like 10 years from now, um, especially given some of the significant funding that's being discussed in the proposed budget. Um, he shared his personal thoughts on curriculum and programming provided by charter schools. Um, one example he gave was regarding um, Commonwealth Cyber Charter School versus the district or the IU run cyber programs. Um, he shared that cyber charter schools may be doing a better job. Um, this was met with some resistance by some on the line, um, including some of the um, 
other legislative committees, um, and just countering and discussing uh, academic results of cyber schools versus our Montgomery County public schools specifically. Um, there was also a reminder by Laura Johnson, who is the head of our legislative committee, about the resolution um, regarding vouchers. That was in the board memo in February. We did not discuss that in length, but that was in the um, in there. She reminded um, the group that um, Norristown, Lower Moreland, and almost all of Chester County has signed this um, resolution, so if that's of interest, um, certainly let me know. Um, otherwise, we have a couple of upcoming dates. I mentioned these, and I think in the last update, there's a legislative breakfast, which I am attending. I think some others are also interested in attending, um, coming up in April. And then April 8th, there's PSBA Day on the Hill, which I will also be attending. The next meeting is on April 3rd at 6 p.m. Thank you, Mrs. Westwood. Any questions or comments? Reg regarding the legislative breakfast, that that is a cost to the district or that's being picked up by individual it, it, board members? It depends. You and I what? are paying for it on our own. Um, you can either pay on your own or you can do it a different way. Well, so I, thought, I thought last year during the budget time where I extended the evaluation another two weeks, it was that <clears throat> any benefit to the board was being taken out of the budget. So, Mr. Sorry. Jackson, I did look into that um, because that did raise an eyebrow for me. So, um, number one, to clarify, Can Mr. Jackson and oh. Mrs. Westwood, um, your names are not on the agenda for approval tonight, even though you are going because you are paying out of pocket. Um, when I saw the cost to the district, um, I did inquire with Mr. Rizzo as we were creating the agenda if this is actually something that we can move forward with because I know that there was cuts to, for example, um, the refreshment, and I also, Mr. Jackson, had the same thought that we cut a lot of board professional development from the budget to compromise and to ultimately get to a place where the board would feel comfortable approving it. Um, and Mr. Rizzo, you did clarify for me that what was cut from the budget was refreshments as well as travel. Um, Mr. Rizzo also did clarify that per policy, it does state that board members must have the opportunity to participate in professional development. So it makes me wonder, um, what bucket is that coming out of? What bucket is that coming out of then? And how does that handle Mr. Rizzo? Well, we didn't allocate, specifically allocate money in the budget. And Mr. Frank, correct me if I'm wrong, um, for the actual fees that go along with professional development. The policy does say that um, should the board support it, that the expectation is that the district um, would pay for it. So uh, if you're going to move forward with that, it would likely come out of the superintendent's budget. Jim, don't cringe. Uh, it would likely come out of the superintendent's budget um, to, to cover that expense. So how do we address that moving forward? Because I don't know that that's the right, I mean, that's not the right approach. So does there need to be a line item in the budget for specifically board professional development? Yes. Okay. So let's talk about that in finance, because I, I do think that um, I'm not one to rob Peter to pay Paul. Like, if this is important and this is per policy, then we need to have that reflected. Well, the board, the district should not be paying for you to go have coffee, eggs, and toast. If you, if, if, if we're going to sit here and cut out public items where the public sees, okay, they're not paying for any water, but in the background, we're going to pay for you to go have breakfast. How do you square that round hole, I guess? It's semantics, it's professional development, but I it's, don't disagree from a philosophical standpoint. It's just money with spending. Okay, thank you. So we can address that in finance moving forward, Mr. Fink. Um, any other questions, comments with regards to legislative committee? Okay. Mrs. Goldsmith. PSBA li liaison. Yes. So Teresa stole part of my thunder. The PSBA Advocacy Day is coming up on uh, April 8th on the Hill. Uh, registration is due if you want to attend by March 29th. And I also like to inform the boards of the free trainings, which again, PSB offers a ton of free trainings that are at no cost. And in fact, one's coming up on May 8th, which is about every single year to the board, a presentation by the security coordinator and safety coordinator has to be given an executive session. And there's been some changes to that. And it's a, it's a free informational webinar about what needs to be part of that report. And I will forward that contact information if you want to sign up. But again, the great thing about PSBA and the resources are there that it's free. So no budget needed. Thank you. Okay. Any questions or comments? Okay, Mr. Lackey, American Legion. Yep. 
Uh, we met on Thursday, February 29th at the Roseford Borough Hall. Uh, nothing to report back to the board at this time. We meet again this Thursday, March 28th. Thank you. Thank you. And likewise, uh, for new board members, you might see emails from, not, I'm going to mispronounce his name, Mr. Gripson. Is that how we say it? Grispon. Grispon. Thank you. My apologies. Um, that hit your inbox every month. So that also can keep you apprised of what's going on. Thank you, Mr. Lackey. Any questions or comments? Okay. Uh, Mr. Rizzo, superintendent's report. Thank you. I have a few items. Uh, first, we have a few days left to round up at the register. Uh, Springford is proud to participate in the Giant Feeding School Kids Initiative. Through March 31st, you can round up at the register to support our school district's efforts to eliminate childhood hunger. Springford received $7,329.96 through this initiative last year to support our students, primarily uh, funds being applied to outstanding food balances. Uh, thank you to all of those who have rounded up, and Giant, thank you for supporting our students. Uh, please feel free to stop by the Giant on Main Street in Royersford uh, to round up at the register and support our schools. Um, there's two Giant locations. Um, the one in uh, the township line, on Township Line in Limerick supports our PV friends. Uh, the one in Royersford supports us for the next few days. Uh, next, girls basketball this past Friday played at uh, played in Hershey uh, for the championship game. Though they did not come out victorious in the state championship, we certainly could not be more proud of our girls. Basketball team, they've shown incredible dedication, skill, and sportsmanship throughout the season, and Friday's game was no exception. To uh, the amazing players, coaches, and supporters, thank you for an unforgettable season. Along as well, we're spreading good news, indoor percussion, Spring Forward Area High School winter percussion, just won the last Winter Guard International East Percussion Power Regional in Toms River, New Jersey, before the big world championships that is happening in April in just a few weeks. They won prelims. Um, this, they won prelims on Saturday, and they beat out 36 other groups to advance to the finals. Congratulations to the coaches and musicians for a job well done, and good luck at finals. Um, Lastly, uh, retirees, we have one on the agenda. Tim Hughes, social studies teacher at the senior high school, 10th through 12th grade center. Uh, 25 years of service at Spring Ford, 33 years of service in total in public education. We thank you, Tim, and best of luck in your next phase. And I would just say before I end my report, finally, we do wish our friends who celebrate a happy, holy, may this festival of colors bring unity, love, and laughter to your homes and hearts. And that is the end of my report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rizzo, and um, congratulations to Mr. Hughes, right, Mr. Hughes, for a um, you know a wonderful career here at Springford. We appreciate your dedication and enjoy the next phase of your life. Okay. Any comments or questions? All right. We'll move on to Mr. Fitzgerald. Uh, just briefly, a couple of what I'll call uh, statewide legal updates that would impact Springford. Um, Today, and I believe it was probably in Mr. Rizzo's inbox, um, a, a dear colleague letter was um, sent by our uh, current uh, Secretary of Education, Dr. Khalid Mumin, um, surrounding issues involving Title IX, sex discrimination, and its implications for students' um, gender identity and sexual orientation. Um, it, it was brought up, I think, due in part to the vacuum in the law right now in terms of lack of clarity under Title IX. Um, I think I mentioned several, several times over the last year or two that there were updates that have yet to come out from the federal government, and uh, the Department of Education felt it necessary to remind districts of its obligation, both under federal law and under state law. So this has been received and certainly something that can be shared with the board accordingly. Uh, secondly, um, and this was mentioned, I believe, during the finance report about um, the legal issues surrounding students uh, receiving special education who can receive it until the age of 22. Um, this is still going through the court system. Um, certainly, I would budget as if the, the law is going to stay as is into the 24-25 school year. Um, there were arguments in front of the Commonwealth Court, a whole panel of the Commonwealth Court, about a month ago on this issue. Any direction from the courts will be slow, as we all know, but uh, that, the, the matter is still churning through the courts, and certainly if there's any uh, guidance uh, from the Commonwealth Court, I will alert you accordingly. We can take a check. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any questions or comments from Mr. Fitzgerald? Okay, we'll move on oh, to the voting. I'm, I'm sorry, I would yes, just Mr. ask to, to have that 
a memo from Dr. Ramin forward because I would, I would like to review those uh, legal obligations that the district has to all of our students. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Deardorff. All right, any other questions or comments? Okay, moving on, we're going to go to the burden section of our meeting. So we'll start with section two minutes, letters A and B. Do I have a motion? Second. 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 Questions and discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 9 0. Moving on to personnel, section three, letters A through P. Separate D. Oh, yeah, he's here. Separate D as in dog. Any others to separate? Okay, so we're gonna look at personnel section three, letters A through P, separating D. Do I have a motion? A second? Second. Questions and discussion? So this is a backfill. Uh, we're doing the other yeah. Yeah. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries 9-0. Okay, now we're looking at section three, letter D. Do I have a motion? So moved. A second. Questions and discussion? Uh, they can hear me. So this is a backfill of, so correct. So Mr. Jones um, has been serving as a teacher on special assignment. Uh -huh. uh, in, um, sitting in Mr. Krakauer's position. Um, we went through the interview process, or we went through the application process, as you know, last month and hired Mr. Mm -hmm. Krakauer. So we're now um, looking to make Mr. Jones permanent in the house principal position. Will there be another backfill required? Um, there will be for the high school band position. And where do we currently stand with that? It has been posted. I don't know if interviews have occurred yet. Well, Mr. Jones could do both. <laughs> Mr. Jones actually probably could do both, but it was not anything I would recommend. Okay, thank you. Any other questions in discussion? Um, do, I do want to um, comment that I appreciate the fact that the district was considering teachers to fill administrative positions. So I, I respect that um, our district is considering the talent that we have within our teaching staff. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions and discussion? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 9-0. Congratulations, now Mr. That, yeah. Jones. I stole your thunder, That's Mr. Okay. Rizzo. I was just going to say now that he's approved, I want to congratulate him and thank him for the work that he's done. He's done an exceptional job over the last year, and we're happy to have him as a regular member of our administrative team. Welcome. And you can wave. Yes. Yeah. There you go. <clears throat> Thank you. All right. We'll move on to Section 4, Finance, Letters A through H. Do I have a motion? A second? Second. Any questions or discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 9-0. Moving on to section five, property letters A through, day, A through D. I will be separating B as in boy. Any others? No, B as in boy works fine. <laughs> Thank you for your uh, support of that, Mr. Jackson. So we're gonna look at section five, letters A, C, and D. Do I have a motion? A second? Second. Any questions or discussion? I'll let you go first. Okay. No, no, no. We got to do. Mr. Jackson, you missed one meeting and you forget the process. I know. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. Aye. <laughs> Any opposed? Motion carries 9 0. Okay. Moving on to property, letter B. Do I have a motion? A second? Second. All right. And then questions and discussion. So, being as though I separated this, I will um, kick off. So, I know that when property meant earlier in the month, I had asked a question around the scope of the playground um, upgrades. Knowing that this is part of our 10-year plan, um, my question was specifically, what is being, um, what is, what is being uh, enhanced? 
So Brooke currently has three, uh, three I would say, separate playground um, device, uh, I don't know what the word is, like equipment or playground, playground, three separate playgrounds. So you have one in the kindergarten, uh, you have the main one, and then you have another one that's kind of off to the side. So I, I, don't, I don't know that I still understand, um, given what was shared in board memo, um, are all three being updated or is it just the main the main one? Because when I look at the, the pictures of what the future one looks like, I'm thinking it's probably just the main one. Do we know that? So, so I can answer that for you. Um, the kindergarten playground remains the same. Nothing gets done to that. The main playground that's in the center area that is the one that gets replaced. Okay, and then some of the not all of the equipment gets replaced. There is some equipment that that is to the left side of that correct. main area that will remain. It's that not will that stay. Old. Okay, so that addresses one question. The second question I have is when I looked at the picture in board memo, um, I was a little bit taken aback at the drawings that the um, vendor provided. Because when I look at it, and I don't know if everyone had the opportunity to look at it, when I look at it, the first thing that struck me was, is this going to be friendly for students with disabilities? Because it's a lot of climbing, it's a lot of netting, it looks to me to be less, um, like less flat from a, like a platform standpoint. It's a, I mean, I don't know if anyone wants to see it, but there's just a lot going on here. And then also when I look at the swing set that we are proposing, I'm not seeing any diagram for like an all abilities type of swing. And I understand that Brooke is not a school that has that type of programming right now, but I, I feel like to not include that or to have, and again, maybe I have to ask a question like what consideration was given with regards to this, um, I think it limits like what we may do. And first of all, students, don't have to go to a different school, right? You can have a child with special needs that decides to stay within their home school. Um, but also, I think from a future planning standpoint, you know, even though Brooke is not a, a school right now that has that um, special education programming, I think it hamstrings us from being able to do that should we ever need to do that. Um, so I don't know if that was a comment or a question. <laughs> I think it was a combination of all, of yeah. all three. Um, as chair of, of, of property and, and Mr. Dan can also jump in here. I, I think maybe this is an item that should be reviewed again um, based on some of the concerns that you voiced, Madam President. That's my recommendation. And I just wonder what that does to the timeline. Again, I don't think the timeline should dictate for I mean, listen, y'all vote how you want to vote, but um, for me, I'm not going to allow the timeline to dictate what I think is right, but I would be curious to know what impact does having this go back to property potentially for a second look due to the ability to get this installed this summer. Well, this is a vendor that we've used th over the years uh, going through the proc procurement process, and that would be a conversation that um, Mr. Dan and Mr. Sean would have to have with them to see what that potential impact could be or could it be modified to address some of these specific items that you brought forth. And, and I don't know, I mean, like I'm looking at Heidi or, uh, I, and I, again, just at first look, I, maybe this is, no, okay, Heidi says no. <laughs> no I, share exactly the same. I share exactly the same concerns that you raised. And I think from looking at the schematic it it looks identical to that of Royersford Elementary and have we received any feedback I guess from the, from that population of, of how it's been working out there I, I Do they can have those concerns so I can make a comment on that I have not heard any negative pieces as far as that is concerned we did ask uh, recreation resources to model what we currently have at our other schools. So I think they took that into consideration when they made this design for us at Brook. Um, 
Again, I think if we look at the design, I don't know that the whole entire thing needs to be changed. I think maybe some pieces need to be added if you're looking for an inclusive type playground. Similarly, maybe as we're moving forward, since we have this 10 year plan, is that something that we can consider in advance? just to make sure for all of our schools, if we're replacing equipment that we have an eye that it's equipped for all of our students? Well, we don't normally have these issues. No, I understand. You know, so I understand. We, we tend to cover our bases, and if this was a mis misstep on my committee, then we will address it. I don't think it's a misstep on your committee. I think it's, yeah. Well, okay, if you want to say so. Um, so, any other questions or comments? One uh, clarification, uh, the, the proposal from the vendor uh, talks about the cost of this uh, approximately 90000 and the asking uh, approval for the playground is 165000 I'm assuming there is a difference between the demolition of the current equipment and area and the preparation for the installation of the new uh, playground, so I'm assuming that's not shared in the memo. Or is that uh... the the proposal is a proposal um, what should have been shared with the board was a copy of the actual contract which would define all the costs that's involved so um, that's what should have happened not a proposal okay so it, it adds up to close to 165,000 yes sir okay. thank you I just saw a big gap. I wanted to get clarification. Fair, fair question, sir. Fair question. So, sorry if I'm stepping on your toes, uh, Ms. Hermans. No. So, would the next step be to vote this down, or would we amend? So, uh, Mr. Rizzo would, is, is suggesting it be tabled. No. No. I mean, we can just simply abandon. The, the vote on it tonight. I would prefer it not be tabled because there's a mechanism to have to bring it back Correct. off the table or on the table. Um, we could vote it down if we want to, or we could just move on and we're not going to vote on it. And I'm then right. presumably there's going to have to be work done between tonight and our next voting meeting in April. It might look different, the action item, but it will, there'll be a new action item on for April. I mean, I would, I would be, listen, like, don't let my comment influence the rest of you. I do feel like we should vote if it's on here and if it's a will of the board to support it, then it is the will of the board to support it. I'm only one person that had a dissenting, you know, that spoke up with a dissenting view, so. Does this action item, all it has here is a new playground with this cost. It's not necessarily committing us to that design, is it? I, I would prefer that we come back and vote on a package that includes a design that's um, also uh, supportive by the board. Any other questions? Thank you, Mrs. Deardorff. Okay. All those in favor say aye. Any opposed? Yes. 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 All right. So it sounds like that um, did not carry 9-0. Okay. So we'll look forward to having that discussion in property in April. Um, moving forward, section six, programming and curriculum, letters A through M. Can, can we pull out uh, letter J? Yes, letter J is pulled out. Erica, can I confirm you're doing A through M? Oh, I apologize. Let me rephrase. I said I was not going to do that at the beginning, and then I said it. Uh, thank you, Ms. Screw. So we are going to look at programming and curriculum, section six, letters A through L, thank you. And we're still pulling out J. Any others? Sorry. G, J, M. No. M is not on the table. We're not doing that right this voting meeting. So Based just, on? The announcement at the beginning where it's not ready to be voted on, and so we remove right. that. So yes. we're going to isolate. We're not going to address that, but we're going to address the other ones who fall under the same umbrella. Under the same umbrella? <clears throat> the umbrella of curriculum and programming? No, umbrella of disagreement is subject to review and approval by the solicitor's office, which is the same verbiage that's on end. Oh, on the other ones. 
which I, I fight this every time. I don't know why we do this. Okay, so for right now, let's pull out G and J. M is not being addressed today, but we could still address your, the intent of your comment. Of course, we'll apply to that when we do ultimately decide to vote on it. And other questions too, but okay. Okay, are there any others, G and J? Okay, so we're looking at programming and curriculum section six, letters A through L minus G and J. Do I have a motion? So moved. A second? Second. Questions and discussion? If, go ahead, I'll, I will wait. I all, will wait. All for, those in favor say yeah. aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 9-0. So next we'll take one at a time, section six. Letter G. Do I have a motion? A second? Second. Questions and discussion? Why do we continually do this? So part of Mr. Fitzgerald's duties are to review the contracts before they come to the board. Everybody know when the board's going to meet. We put out a schedule a year in advance of every meeting. And we continually this continue, continues to occur, and I'm just dumbfounded. Why? Why are we asking this? Why are we asking this board to approve contracts that have not been reviewed by a solicitor? I'm not sure what corporation a lot of you work at, but I would doubt that your company would approve a contract. Well, I can speak to this contract. Well, um, I'm going to watch all of them. Well, for this one, it has been reviewed. Uh, we are waiting on the vendor to respond to a particular provision that we've um, asked to, to, to be modified, and that's specifically how the payout is mm -hmm. going to occur. So everything has been reviewed. It, it, we're not going to pick up the contract tomorrow for the first time. It's, we're just waiting on the vendor in that regard. But the item does not address that. It does not, because there could be a possibility that the vendor um, will not agree to the change, and then ultimately be a decision of the administration, presumably with my office, as to whether you want to proceed with that contract or not. So then, why why are we put it on the agenda? With there's so many. Well, you know, I, as to why it's on the agenda, that's that's a separate well, question. That's my point. Yeah, I, 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 presumably it would be because it's going to be addressed, hopefully to our benefit in terms of the the, the language modification we're looking for, and then we can order accordingly. You first. I was going to no. Yes, I was going to say, Mr. Rizzo, but if you want to finish, Mr. Jackson. So my question goes back to, number one, why is it on the agenda if there are open items? Everyone knows the process for approval. It is like asking for approval in a regular meeting versus the voting meeting. Everyone has adequate time to submit these documents. And I just think it's, it's not fair to the board, at least from where I sit, in my experience, that we approve contracts that based on the presentation has not been approved by the solicitor or reviewed by the solicitor. You can, you can amend that, Mr. Fitzgerald. They've, they, they've been reviewed, they've been completed. It, we're now waiting on, the, unfortunately, the vendor sometimes is the one that we are waiting on. So then why is it on the agenda? That's, that's not a question for you. Well, my committee put this forth with a recommendation working with the administrative team. And I can tell you that is, to the best of my knowledge on the board, this has been common practice. Well, from the best of my knowledge from having been on the board, and we can certainly look, at, look back and find out, but that this is not something that is new. We take it very seriously that, um, that these agreements are approved by and, and reviewed by our solicitors. Sometimes this takes time and there is go back and forth with this. And I'm looking at um, Dr. Gardy if she wanted to add anything to that, but we feel very confident that the products are, are vetted. We have relationships with a lot of these publishers, but we also want, or vendors I should say, but some of this is very nuanced and specialized. You know, for, we have questions specifically for our district that we have to go back forth and ask. And as Mr. Fitzgerald had said, we're waiting for a response sometimes from the, um, from the vendor, but we want to be able to move forward. Dr. Gardy, I see you looking like you would like to comment also. Thank you. 
I just wanted to add one of the reasons why this was on the agenda now, and we've been working on this particular product since October, um, but when we got down to it, we did share this information in February. Again, like Mr. Fitzgerald said, it's been a lot of back and forth with the vendor, and it really just comes back to protecting our assets in making sure that all of the bases are covered. Um, and the reason that we have it on this particular agenda is the product that we're looking to be able to move forward with is related to our in-service on April 23rd to provide our teachers the opportunity to see the product before they would then begin teaching in August, which is why we can't, we didn't wait, I shouldn't say we can't wait, we didn't wait until next month because then we wouldn't have it in time for our April 23rd in-service. So it's a timing of execution what this comes down to. That's Dr. Hard Wright, I can hear you. Yes. Every time this comes up, I bring this up. So mm -hmm. I can appreciate we deal with the same vendor. So if we're dealing with the same vendors, why are we having the same issues? These are the same vendors we deal with on a, on a consistent basis. I don't think the language change, changes that much based on the items that we purchase. So I just find it disappointing that we keep going through this. And it's not just with curriculum. Well, so, so let me jump in here. I will say this. One, I cannot say that it's a regular practice, but it is a past practice that when we have a hang up in some case with some of our contracts, we do put this language on there. I can go through our agendas and show you where we've done that over the last five years since I've been here. It is nothing we prefer to do. It is something we prefer to avoid if we can. But there are a large, large number of T's and C's that we go through on a regular basis to ensure that our district and our, and our students and our staff and our information is protected. We're reviewing with our leadership team. Uh, we're reviewing what our process is going to be for who reviews what because there are timelines we have to hit and there sometimes a lot of things on people's plates that get bogged down, and I'm not talking on behalf of the district. I'm talking about the vendor. I'm talking sometimes Fox Rothschild has a lot of agreements to go through. So these are things that we consider on a regular basis. Uh, we do not do this as a matter of regular practice, but it does come up from time to time. So it, the board has expressed an interest in having every, every one of our contracts, unless, it was, unless the genesis was from Fox Rothschild, to have every one of our contracts reviewed. So we're doing our due diligence in that regard. If you'd like us to change that practice, we can have that discussion. My question is not based on the T's and C's. I'm very familiar with that. My question would be, what can we do better from a process perspective? So if it's, we've done it for three years or five years, it pops up, it, it pops up. So is there something that the administration would be willing to consider or be open to modifying the process so this does not happen? Yes, there are, yes, there are one-offs, but I think maybe we'll look at the process of execution Maybe that's and, something we can look at. And I would say that's a fair point, but I would say this. Uh, the curriculum department does a fantastic job of getting the buy-in and doing the collaborative process, which takes time. There's a whittling down process whenever they finally decide on a vendor. And I don't think we want to review contracts that we're not planning on using the vendor. So that's kind of a waste of time and effort. So the, it does come to a certain point. I understand that's not what you're saying, but I'm saying there's a process that was a whittling down process from the vendors that takes some time whenever we get the buy-in. We only have so many in-service days, we only have so many opportunities to get our staff together. So it does take time. So we will look at that process uh, and we will do our best to minimize this. And I'd like to tell you that I'll promise it will never happen. I can just say that we will do our due diligence to make sure that it doesn't happen to the best of our ability. Fair enough, thank you. Any other questions and comments? I, I had one comment. Since I sit on the curriculum committee, I, I will just say I was, we are not made aware at the curriculum committee that some of these agreements were not at the stage to be voted on. So it, I do think it would be valuable information if that is information that is shared during curriculum committee so that the questions can be vetted as to where are we at with the contract, what does that involve, so that when we sit here and we are, like if I was being asked, well, why is this being subject to uh, solicitor of office? I don't have that information. I, I truly don't know. So I think it's important because if we're making a recommendation, I was under the understanding when we're making the recommendation to move forward that we are prepared to move forward. And trust me, I'm an attorney. I understand there's hiccups. But what I think I'm hearing, and maybe I'm wrong, and please someone correct me if it is, is that if that provision, whatever it is, and I don't know what it is, is not worked out, that the board then is taken out of that decision-making process and it is between admin and the solicitorship. And I don't know, and this is an individual decision of every person on this board, is is this board comfortable with that process? And if so, great, but if not, then there needs to be other steps in between time to make sure that we're all on the same page and that it's being voted on properly. 
I, so I mean, can, regardless I, that, of, oh, I apologize. Sorry. Regardless of the decision, is there an opportunity from a policy standpoint to remove the ambiguity from this going forward? When you in say what regard? What do you What do you mean? Well, I mean, it's our preference to have certain language in here or not in here. Can we codify that in any meaningful way in what we determine? You mean our process for, for what we do get reviewed yeah. and what we don't get reviewed? Yeah. We formalize it in some way. If, if we're not comfortable approving items with this verbiage, is there a way to codify that? Beyond I would say the lo for long-range planning, yes, that's a process that we're going to be undergoing. We actually have started undergoing and having conversations. So uh, for the long-range, yeah, uh, for this particular motion, I don't know that I can help right this moment. Yeah, I mean long term. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Fitzgerald, were you yeah, going to say mean, something? I mean, maybe the issue is to, to uh, Mrs. Goldsmith's point is maybe the review has to occur before the, the contract comes to the, even the committee because usually how this plays out is the committee approves moving forward with something at, following the committee meeting which usually is about a week 10 days before the work session and then we start the process of either negotiating updated terms and it, it leads a tight window in that regard hence why that language is usually in there um, so if it's an issue of having full closure by the point by the time it gets to this this meeting maybe the review has to occur before the committee meeting so um based on some of what what was said also uh, sometimes because normally when at the curriculum meetings the the it is we approve to move it to the table um, based on the solicitor's review of it. Uh, sometimes at the committee meeting level, there will be questions that will be brought back for the solicitor to review. So sometimes questions come up at the committee level that we would ask are further looked into um, by the solicitor. So I just am, I want to make sure this is a long process, these textbooks adoption, material adoptions, that um, they're part of our agenda, are part of our annual schedule, but it does require, and I think, and Mr. Rizzo, you know, um, talked about it a little bit, where we have to contact the publishers, have them bring, um, get materials. They are reviewed at the administrative level and at the teachers. We have to be able to get the teachers, allow them time to look at these materials, to vet these materials, uh, to provide feedback. Um, then we look at what the costs would be. There's some negotiation with costs that go in there and delivery and when we can get these materials. So these take, this takes months. And then once they do come in, as I said, we're trying to get them in so that we can provide the professional development. So it's not something that's usually done within a month or two. It is a long time. So my only concern is that um, we not do anything that prevents or slows down our administrative team from being able to get the materials that the teachers want into the hands of our teachers and students. We are talking about contracts. We're not talking about content. We're talking about contracts, T's and C's, totally different, totally different worlds. So I'd like to kind of just summarize here what I think our well, ask of administration is which is to look, Mr. Jackson, to your point, which is like thinking about how can we prevent these or minimize these types of instances moving forward, whether that's something that it sounds like, Bob, you and your team are already acknowledging and working on, um, but also to Dr. Wright's point, acknowledging the fact that, especially in this case, you know, given what Dr. Gardy had mentioned, there is some expediency that was required of this because of the professional development day in April. Um, so not to be so rigid with these things that it impedes our administrators' ability to do what they need to do for their teachers. So can we leave that with you to say that? Is that okay? Can I just make for me. one more comment about that? Because from what I'm hearing, is my understanding that the contract is not provided to you till after the committee meeting? It, again, it depends on the, what I'll call the domain. You know, right. sometimes if it's a, when we had the GISA project last, maybe it was two falls ago, we, we were, you know, in con a discussion with that well in advance. But typically, if, if there's a contract that requires our review, and we don't review every contract, I mean, that would be a, col a colossal right. uh, um, um, s uh, event. <laughs> um, but for the ones that we do, it usually comes after a committee meeting that we, we get it. So I'm going to promote, you know, love your lawyer day. And the reality of the situation is, is equally as important as the teachers are part of this process, as admin is part of this process, 
contract review, which can be very, can blow up everything and, and destroy all the work that people have put into, because that a contract provision is going to be something that is important. In, I would encourage the possibility of the attorney being part of that review, pro not at the beginning, but when you've narrowed it down and at the end to, to prior to the committee or did, prior to after the committee. Did you not state that you reviewed the contract and we're just waiting on the vendor in this case? We're just waiting on the vendor. So yeah. I think that that is happening, but I think it goes back to Mr. Jackson's, which is like, how can we maybe push forward the con the, the final, like the, the, maybe by, a little early in the, the process. By the way, the, the language is to protect us. Uh, you know, it, 95% of the time we actually don't need that subject to solicitor review, but it's in, in my view it protects us if we're in negotiation still in this case with McGraw-Hill, it still has that condition that it's, it's conditioned upon our agreement with the language we're trying to propose. So it's really a protective mechanism than anything else. Normally I would say, you know, we didn't have this issue with Giza, but since I have egg on my face from the playground equipment tonight, I won't say that. But, um, yeah, or even if we can amend the comment that's on here, that there's something that's, that's still out there, then we, at least we know what we're doing. Oh, that, tr true. And in this instance, it's about how we spread, over the, spread out the pays. It's a very particular issue. So if that needs to be clarified when you are voting so you know what the outstanding issue is, I think that's, that's probably the best way to handle it. So here's the outstanding remaining issues with this, with this particular contract. That might be the way to do it. So I'm good. You Thank you. I'm glad that you feel good now, Mr. Jackson. So I'm going to go back. Do you want me to amend the agenda? Is that, or to amend this action item? Oh, uh, no, there's nothing okay. that needs to be amended here. All right. Um, no. Perfect. Yeah. That's good. Any other questions and discussion? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 9-0. Um, uh, Erica, I'm sorry, who was the first and second for that motion? Oh, did I say that before? No, sorry, no, Mr. Jackson, I got egg in my face too, huh? All right, so let's go back. So we had questions and discussion. Yeah, we did have them. We did have, I don't remember who did it. Do we need to just do it all over again then? I took the motion in the beginning, I then we had questions like and discussion. Did. I don't recall who I first and second did it. I, I first and Karen. All right. Abby was first, Karen second. Or we can go back to the recording and, and listen, but yes, it did happen. All right, good. I want to make sure I wasn't... Keep it consistent. Yeah, keep it consistent. <laughs> All right, moving on to section six, letter J. Do I have a motion? A second? Second. Questions and discussion? So I know Mr. Jackson also had a concern about this issue. Was, was it just the solicitor situation, or did you have another one, Mr. Jackson? I don't want to jump ahead of you. It's the AI turn it in. I'll just start. So, and here's my concern, and it has nothing to do with uh, Mr. Fitzgerald at this time. So, I am familiar with turn it in and its capacity, and, and understand that it's a multi formatted process. Right now, the currently the district is using it for originality. There was a new feature developed, I think, in 2023 for AI detection, basically the ability of this specific. Um, program to detect AI. One of the concerns I have, and I raised at the curriculum committee, is that right now there is no restrictions on terms of how this will be used and to what capacity will impact students. And by that I mean the AI, you know, turn it, if it detects AI, that student may be subject to disciplinary actions. It could range anywhere from, uh, you know, low grade nothing, maybe a conversation, all the way up theoretically, you know, under our provisions to, um, you know, much more significant discipline actions. Right now, Turnitin has been not utilized by certain universities. I have had personal situations where I've had clients at the university level who have utilized other AI that is permitted, like Grammarly, which is permitted by the university, but actually get caught up as an AI detected as a positive and actually subject to discipline actions, and that's why I was contacted. Right now, without the necessary safety protocols to ensure our students that in a program that has too high of a rate of, for my personal comfort, of false positives, I am not comfortable right now moving forward with the use of this unrestricted. If it was a situation where it was specific policies and limitations or piloted, because again, we're talking 3,000 and we have approved you know, much greater numbers than that. To me, though, this is really a student-centered concern 
of the fact that I don't want our students not to be negatively impacted on a false positive. Dr. Gardy, I don't, could you share your perspective on it? Uh, thank you, Mrs. Hermans. Um, yes, so taking a look at the white paper that the Turnitin published, the documents from students submitting would not be flagged for AI unless it hits that 20% threshold. And then from there, what we would do is just look at the students' work. And so one of the things, and I see Mrs. Ritter in the um, audience tonight, that was one of the teachers that brought it to us based on some of the advanced placement courses that our students are submitting their work to. We want to make sure that our students are submitting work that is re required for the academic integrity. So this would be one flag that students may receive if that was the case. One of the things that I did talk to both teachers that came to me about this proposal was the professional development that we would want to do with all of our teachers that would use this product, both for the professional development for their understanding, as well as making sure that we would support students in their understanding of how to utilize the tool. Uh, because the students would get feedback from their teachers once they submit their work. So, help my dumb brain to understand this. If, if there is a positive, what is the process of, or how do we vet this? Is, is there something we have in place, like we have uh, a body of the student's work? We have some sort of DNA that we can do a comparison to, or, I mean, anybody on the administration? Are there, are there any administrative regulations as it relates to how this is gonna be used? Are those developed yet? Um, as far as the administrative regulations, I know Dr. Murray has been looking at that because right now the policy states that students are not permitted to use AI. Uh, so that is one of the pieces that Dr. Murray has been working with teachers and another subcommittee or su subgroup of teachers and administrators to take a look at that. This particular piece would be an add-on to the other pieces that we've already used for Turnitin, which is really related to originality. It really comes back to academic integrity and making sure that students are producing their own work. So to what Mr. Jackson asked, I believe you're asking like by comparison. If I were to submit something, you're also looking at other work that I may have submitted in the past. Absolutely. This is not just a one and done. We would take a look at it. That's part of the professional development we've already done many years ago with originality pieces, with the, with the original Turnitin. This is just that added piece that maybe something like ChatGPT could generate ideas and then students would begin their work. Again, that's not where we are as a district. Many schools are starting to look at that as to what generation of ideas, the generative pa uh, pathways for AI, but then making sure that ultimately you're submitting your own work. Well, thank you and thanks Ms. Ritter for agreeing with you by nodding her head, so thank you. I did want to add one more thing while we're talking about Turnitin under the solicitor review. That is something that has been resolved today. Obviously, by the time we had had to post this agenda, that wasn't resolved. So I just wanted to go back to that so that you know that this is uh, cleared. I, I would like to also add that the teachers have been piloting this for approximately six months and have requested to have this as a resource available to them. So is that because the district has a problem that we're aware of, Dr. Wright? I'm sorry, I missed your question. Is that because the district has a problem? They, we piloted for, for six months and we made the determination that we need it. Is that based on a cause or? I'm going to let Dr. Gardy answer that. This was a new, newer feature from Turnitin so that they activated it essentially is what happened. And then when it got turned off, that's when we looked at it as a possibility of moving forward with it. Thank you. And if I may add, um, it, this is no different than just Alexa, turn my lights on. Uh, if you like to get your paper done or check your calculations, check your codes uh, for your engineering, uh, any kind of uh, complex situation. So I understand it's, it's new, but it's, it's getting common everywhere. So I, and, and to Heidi's point, we need to protect our students uh, because this is gonna happen a lot. We're gonna see uh, a lot of students leverage it, but I would prefer they learn and understand how they can leverage rather than putting boundaries where they can't touch this because I, I remember that saying uh, generations ago that no one will have calculators in their pockets and now we all do. So I don't wanna completely ignore AI. Yeah, and, and this really is, it's widespread, I mean, and, and part of this is uh, making sure there's regulations around it to make sure that it's used in the right way. But I do see this as another tool that teachers will have 
in order to make indicate you know to figure out if this is original work or not uh, to make sure that students are being taught and they're learning and they're they're able to reflect that back so as far as a tool and not the only thing that we're using to determine originality i think it's a, a good idea a good tool to have and I guess that's where my concern is, is if it was a tool or a piece of information, I think it's great. Right now, there are no admin regulations that prohibit it from being the sole determining factor. And so if a teacher decided to give a zero on that assignment, that, as I understand it, would be permitted right now because there's no regulations that would prohibit that. And that's what I'm saying is that I would prefer it to be, there be regulations regarding the usage by teachers and admin before we utilize this for any type of disciplinary action, even including like a zero on an assignment. So is, is that a policy issue then, Heidi? I guess is my question, that policy needs to address the users or something else? So uh, let me jump in. Um, because this has really been a good discussion. It's admittedly, and with, no, with all due respect, it's a little bit misplaced. Um, you're approving a tool tonight, and if we're going to have our process when we approve tools, it's for you to know how we're going to implement and how we're going to train to use that tool. That's going to bog us down a little bit. Um, we have a fantastic team. We have great teachers, and we have a great uh, we have a great structure in place to support them. So we would not just willy-nilly throw out a tool and say, go ahead and use it at, at the risk of our students' grades. We, we wouldn't do that. So I, I would ask you to give my team the time to provide the appropriate professional development and, and to talk about how it's going to be implemented if they haven't already done so. But I, I feel comfortable with them moving forward with this tool. I would just caution the board that if you want us to talk about how we're going to implement all the tools before you feel comfortable giving an approval, I think we need to have a conversation about that. And, and, I, and I appreciate that, I understand that, and I think we approve a lot of tools where we don't ask that. I think when we're dealing with a high stakes tool that for a student can impact the rest of their life, because if a student is subject to wanting to go to a competitive college, and for a situation where you're saying, well, we just gave the student a detention, and while it's a, dis, a situation on their record, it's a detention, but in terms of if that child's applying to a competitive college and they're competing against another student, that could be a defining factor. So for me, I, I don't disagree with you. I mean, we approve curriculum all the time and different tools. I love tools. But when we're dealing with a tool that is very new, and when we're talking AI, you know, I don't think any, we, this is a burgeoning territory for everybody. When we're dealing with high stakes impact to students, I think at that point in time, I prefer, would like to have some, some predetermined safety nets for our students in place. But again, I, I trust admin. I think they do a fantastic job. It's to me this one specific tool that I have concerns about because again, the impact of the students is so great. So I'll, I'll try to end on this, Mr. Rizzo. I don't think this is a reflection on you or your team. I simply think if anything is on the agenda, someone should be able to answer the question. And that's all the board is doing is asking questions. Um, sometimes the board does get in the weeds and this is sort of going in that direction but I think if there is a, an item on the agenda for a vote that anything there is open to question. I, I, I would agree that anything is open to question. I don't think that everything that is questioned is going to be able to have a response at any given moment depending on what the question is, right? So I think that the administration does the best of the ability to be able to answer that but to say what does the professional development look like? I don't know that that would be completely vetted right now as I look at Dr. Guardy. We know that we're heading in that direction, or maybe you do. Maybe it is, right? Maybe it is, but um, I don't know that, that that's a realistic expectation to say that you should be able to have an answer at the table every single time a question is asked. There are going to be some unknowns, but that shouldn't prohibit you from asking it. Well, no, and then I would just simply say this because what I don't what I would prefer that we avoid is putting administrators on the spot. So you have the agendas on Friday. Yeah. If you have those questions, I would ask you to give those to us in advance so we can prepare an appropriate response tonight in the evening. 100%. Except sometimes the conversations become organic. And every question can't be asked prior to the meeting, nor should it have to be. If it's an item on there, you're asking me to vote on an item. I would think the individual should be able to answer the question if not, hey, I don't have an answer right now, we'll follow up with it. Thank you. Any other questions and comments? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That carries 8-1.
Moving on to section seven, conferences and workshops, letters A through C. Separate C. Separate C, any others? Okay, so we're looking at A and B. Do I, um, do I have a motion? A second? Second. Questions and discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 9-0. Moving on to section seven, letter C, do I have a motion? A second? Second. Questions and discussion? It's just a question. Um, so as mentioned earlier, Mr. Jackson and I are paying our own way, and I think the question is, should all of us, with the exception of Dr. Murray, do so to not add a cost to the district that's fairly nominal but adds up if we're comfortable with that? Or should we should we go one way or the other? We're sort of split, which I think is an interesting conundrum. I think in the past when I've seen that's usually the district pace. So it's just a question. Could I mention that policy 004, the school board does say that the um, funds for school director education and training shall be budgeted on an annual basis and that um, there will be reimbursement for um, trainings and conventions association of school board directors conventions within the state outside so it is currently within policy thank you yes i understand so, that that wasn't my question though. yes that wasn't the question so I, I will answer that given though it is in policy the agenda item is perfectly legitimate um whether we philosophically disagree based on previous conversations is a whole other story but the action item does stand Okay. Any other questions or comments? Okay. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Categorically no. 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 Okay. That was four no's and five yeses. So we are good. And the motion carries 5 4. Moving on. To section eight, other business, we'll be looking at letter B. Do I have a motion? Second. A second? Second. Questions and discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 9-0. Okay, and that will take us to board comment. Is there a board comment? Can I jump in just very quickly? Yes, sir. Uh, referencing item C, um, do we have an interest in revisiting the policy to update the language on that, or should we be budgeting moving forward? I think that's a conversation that needs to start in finance. I will bring it up in April. Please okay. attend. Do All right, very good. Make sure to uh, take a look at school code for that when you're on budget. Um, making changes to that policy. Yeah, we'll Thank have you. those answers. We're not, we'll start no, with one, finance. no one has stated that any policy is going to be changed. We just said we're going to start the conversation in finance. Correct. Thank you. Please attend. Any other board comment? So speaking of finance, we are going through the year, evaluating as we go forward, and I always like to caution this board, and I've done it for years, so this is just a continuation. But when you sit here on days like this, you spend money. Then we get to the end of the year and then everyone is asking questions, how do we get here? We get here by what you vote on, what you approve that has a dollar associated with it. So if I just simply look at curriculum tonight, we approved plus or minus $1.1 $1 .1 million. I bring this up because I don't want to get at the end of the, the shopping line and everyone starts talking about why is it so expensive. It is expensive because it's a cost to operate as a district, but it's incumbent upon you to be aware of what you're voting on. So that is just a simple reminder. We will continue to do what we do in finance, but I would be remiss if I did not bring this to your attention tonight. 1.1 mil addressing curriculum. Thank you. Thank you. Any other board comment? Okay, I have uh, one comment uh, that I promised I would relay to the full board, um, which was 
on Friday, I attended the String Jamboree, and um, which was phenomenal, by the way. Loved hearing all 600 String students uh, perform in concert together. However, uh, this actually doesn't have anything to do with our music program. It has to do with our flagship football program. So I was stopped in the hallway by a parent, um, and in particular, the parent and her daughter did come to the podium to speak on behalf of the program um, prior to our approval of it. And uh, she just wanted to stop and thank the board for approving it. Um, I mean, she was very grateful. And, you know, I don't speak for the board, but I told her personally, for me, it was a really easy decision. And I just wanted to relay that because she was, she was very um, appreciative of that. And also, her daughter had to pick six in the first game. So I think that was also, um, you, could just see, you could see the excitement in her eyes when, when they had stopped me in the hallway. So thank you for continuing to support programs like this. I think it makes Spring Forward um, a much more enjoyable and inclusive place. I just have a quick announcement the senior prom is saturday april 27th and the post prom event at arnold's uh, will be happening and we need volunteers we need volunteers who have their clearances who are able to do anything from checking students in at the door to making sure the food is being served all night to wandering around and making sure everybody's having a great time to wearing a ram costume maybe Rowdy's going to be there. <laughs> um, so anyone who has their clearances or you need to finish up your clearances, the post-prom committee is certainly looking for uh, volunteers. And one more thing, I just wanted to say it has been a thrill. Um, my family has two German exchange students staying with us right now as part of the German exchange program. They're uh, at, with us till Wednesday. They've been shadowing, I think there's eight eight students from um, from Germany at the high school right now and it is wonderful it is absolutely wonderful so if it's something anyone's considering I know we have the limerick to limerick exchange as well as the German exchange highly recommend these kids are awesome really enjoying it that's it thank you mrs. Weingarten Okay, moving on to public to be heard. This could be on any topic. If you would like to speak, please approach the podium with your name and township of residence. My name is Dr. Sarah Plummer. I reside in Montclair Region 1. This is the second time I'm approaching the board to share concerns about racism within the school district. Over the course of six years, my son has experienced racism at the hands of his teachers and fellow students. In the last month, month, these are the, a few things that he's had to withstand. After sharing with administrators that a white boy had continuously called my son racial slurs and attempted to make him feel less than because of the color of his skin, the boy was given Saturday detention. The bad news is that the boy approached my son, told him that it was his fault that he got detention, and added all for saying three racist things, indicating it was not a real reason he should be punished. Second, he attended a movie night at the school, something he was very excited for. He talked about the night for days, looking forward to being in community with his peers on a fun night. During the movie event, candy was sold by student volunteers. In order to guess, in order to manage how this was sold and to whom, students were stamped on their hand to show that they, bought, they had bought candy. There was apparently a three stamp limit. A white girl up here who was volunteering to sell the candy stated that my son's skin was so dark she couldn't see the stamps and proceeded to laugh. Using her assumed power in selling candy, there was a message sent that he was different, his skin, skin color was made, made him less than, and that he was somehow trying to cheat the system, a common trope surrounding black people. And therefore, if she wanted to refrain from selling from him, she could. Lastly, a different white girl in this grade pulled him aside and felt the need to inform him that another student used the N-word and then stated she didn't think that, there, that this was wrong and that there was anything wrong with them, him saying the word. As a school board, your role is to influence and change policy. As the decision makers, I ask that you work together to respond to these concerns and be the leaders you promised to be when you elected. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else would like to speak? Motion to adjourn? So moved. All right.